The next step in this restoration will be to de-rust all of the steel parts. And to do this I'm going to use an electrolysis method that I found online. For this I need a 5 gallon bucket, rebar concrete reinforcement rod to act as the electrodes, arm and hammer washing soda, and that's different from baking soda, it works completely different, so the two can't be confused. A 6 amp car battery charger, which is the minimum recommended, worked perfectly fine for the last one I did. And then some way of supporting the parts inside. I'm using thick piano wire that I picked up from the hobby shop. For the electrolyte mixture, I'll be using just over a half cup of the washing soda. I'll pour that into the bucket first for the water. So then as I fill the bucket, the water can mix. And to fill it, I just use the garden hose. I'll start that out on low. And that'll take a minute to fill up. I'll be filling it up to right about here. And that's all full now. As you can see, there's some particles floating around in there. That's from the last time I did this. But filling it with water after putting in the washing soda helped it to mix thoroughly without having to stir it or anything. So that was a bit of a time saver there. For the wiring, both electrodes in the bucket are tied together, and those are connected to the positive connector from the car battery charger, and then the part to be de-rusted will connect to the negative. The first part I'm going to clean will be one of these window frames here. Before I connect it, I'm just going to clean out the contact point with the file a little bit. That's just to make sure it'll make good contact. And then, I have this piece of piano wire here, which I've formed as a hanger. I'll just stick that through the window. It'll hang in there nice and tight. And then, this will go right into the bucket between the two electrodes. Once that's hanging in the bucket, Make sure it's right between the two electrodes, because that's apparently the best point for the process to work. And make sure none of the wiring is touching. Don't want any short circuits to happen. And the black connector will go right there. And then we can plug in the battery charger. Alright, the charger's plugged in now. And the process is working. There are little tiny bubbles floating up from the part. That's the reaction happening and that'll eventually cause the rust to float up to the top. The amperage should be anywhere between 2 and 4 amps. Right now it's at about 3 and that'll fluctuate a little bit over time. Usually it drops down to about 2 after a while. There isn't a whole lot happening yet for a part this rusted. I would recommend leaving it in the bucket for about an hour before it's taken out and cleaned. Alright, that's been in there for about an hour now, and I can see all sorts of gunk floating on the top of the water, so I should be able to take it out now. While the part's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick cleaning with some soap and water. Just to make sure there's no scum left on there. Doesn't need to be a really thorough cleaning. The last thing that needs to be done is to take off whatever rust and rust particles are left on the metal. For this I like to use a steel wire wheel and a drill press. That's a pretty large one there my favorite one to use, but for anything that needs something smaller, I've got this slightly smaller steel wire wheel that can fit inside of the passenger cars for 
taking whatever's left off of the floors. Right, just a few minutes with the wire wheel and this thing is rust free. Without the electrolysis that would have taken about 10 times longer using only a wire wheel. For really small parts like these which are also rusty it's actually easier to just go ahead and skip the electrolysis and go straight to the wire wheel because there's not much area to cover so there's no reason to go through that. A little bit of extra trouble. All this thing needs now is to be straightened out just a little bit. For that I'm using the steel weight that came out of an old River Rossi steam engine. Any block of metal will do for this. So just use a hammer to lightly tap out those bins and dents. This isn't hard to do. just takes a little extra time. It's just one of those little extra things that should be done to make it look as good as possible. And now this thing is nice and straight and free of rust. That little gap there between the top and bottom should be about 3 16 of an inch for the best fit inside of the passenger car body. And if there are any pits that need to be filled, holes that need to be filled, then that can be done now. But otherwise, this is ready for the next step, which is painting.